morning I'm going to pick up uh, a couple who just flew in from the Philippines, a veteran and his wife, who they just recently got married I guess, and went back to the Philippines and got her, and they got out of the country very quickly. A good friend of mine contacted me from Seattle and asked me to do him a favor and pick up a friend of his who was flying Space A from Seattle uh, or somewhere, I think probably from McCord to uh, Anderson Air Force Base, space available. So I would head up that way and uh, pick him up. And wouldn't you know, just as we were approaching the uh, front gate to Anderson Air Force Base, the plane is on time. That's some good timing. Personally, I had never heard of this humanitarian parole program before, and I did some research on it and learned that individuals who are outside of the United States may be able to request parole into the United States based on urgent, humanitarian, or significant public benefit reasons. In the case of the veteran I was picking up here at the airport, he is qualified to bring his wife home with him based on a discretionary option of the program titled Immigrant Military Members and Veterans Initiative, or IMMVI. After picking up, uh, let's call him Joe, after I picked Joe up at the airport, I dropped him off at a local hotel and he was going to catch a uh, commercial flight from here back to the Philippines to uh, fetch his bride. And I would pick him up on the return trip uh, back to the States. This morning I'm going to pick up uh, a couple who just flew in from the Philippines. Uh, a veteran and his wife who they just recently got married, I guess, and went back to the Philippines and got her. And they got out of the country very quickly uh, through a means called humanitarian parole. Not too many people have used or heard of uh, utilizing the process called humanitarian parole. I'm going to see if I can't pick his brain a little bit this morning and see what it's all about. So just Joe just uh, just picked up Joe, right? Yep. And his uh, new bride, she's in the back there somewhere. Yeah. And uh, flew in from Manila. Uh, we flew it. We we actually flew in from, from Korea, Clark from Korea. Oh, from Korea. Yeah, it was cheaper for us to fly from Clark to. I Korea. I mean, you left you left Manila. Yeah. Korea, yep, yep, yep. To Guam. Yep. And now you're leaving Guam on the Patriot Express. We hope to. Yeah, we're going to find out here shortly. Space available type of flight? Yep, Space all the way. A. Back to Seattle. Yeah. Seattle. Where I'm from. So. Joe got his wife out of the country on a humanitarian parole. Yep, she's got and some medical stuff needs to get done. and, and We're going uh, to talk about it a little bit later, maybe on another video. Yep, but, uh, yeah. It's a system and a program that not too many people are aware of. Right. Of trash left over from that oh, wow, used to be yeah. that pile was like 10 times bigger than that. Wow, trash left over from the typhoon. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, follow up and talk about that whole process. I'm telling you, it was quite an emotional experience going through well, the original denial of, of trying to get my wife a tourist visa, right? Because so how, how long have you been married? Uh, we've been married for since January 12th, so. Seven months. Okay, and then she applied for the visa. Or she was denied. yeah. After we got married, uh, we took her to the embassy. Uh, you know, applied. Well, before that, we applied for her B one B two visa because uh, we live in the Philippines in Pampanga, and uh, you know, she wanted to bring her home to get medical stuff done. And I've got medical appointments. I'm a disabled veteran, and uh, you know, every once in a while, I got to go home and get stuff done. And she hasn't met my mom. And, mom's on dialysis so she can't even travel if she wanted to so all these things happened she went to the embassy to get her uh b1 D b1 b2 visa and the gal who interviewed her at the consulate there like i think probably talked to her for about 30 seconds and didn't look at any of her supporting documents didn't really listen wham bam uh, yeah i i think i think it's probably because we've been married for uh, a short period of time standard operating procedure yeah i mean uh, it really surprised me if anybody else had any other uh 
um, any other experiences. I've talked to a lot of folks in our situation and, and uh, you know, so many denials just because there's really no appealing it. You can keep paying the money and trying to get, you know, a, tour, a tourist visa. They'll take your money. But, uh, you know, it's really deceptive because the U.S. government should actually have uh, guidelines that say, hey, you need to be married this long in order for us to approve your, you know, your visa for B-1, B-2. Sometimes I think it's just all about the money. Well, I just don't think that, uh, I don't think they're being forthright and honest about the process because if they were, then, you know, if they put out guidelines that said, hey, we're not going to approve a B-1, B-2 visa until you've been married for six months, right. that's at least something people could work well, with. Check all the boxes and you're approved. Absolutely, so, uh, absolutely. You know, unless, you obviously, unless there's, you know, some deception or something like that. I used to work for the government for years, so I understand that, but... All right, we're coming up on the terminal yeah. that was destroyed in a typhoon. I don't know if it's reopened yet, so... No, they're, it's, uh, it's at the squadron where you pick me up. Okay, we're going to go up to the makeshift terminal. Yeah, so, so the, yeah, it's... It's not a perfect system. I think everybody knows that. So it was really frustrating, very emotional to, you know, have my wife. You know, we, we live hours away from the embassy. For us to be able to go to and from is quite an ordeal. Uh, for her to get just denied in 30 seconds without without any real discernment involved uh, was really a humbling experience. And depressing. And depressing. So, you know, I mean, I said I worked for the government for years. So where there's a will, there's a waiver, as they say. And I found the IMMVI program, um, so that uh, and we, we went that route, and she met all the requirements for it. And thanks be to God, you know, within two months she got approved, and and, and here we are on our way back home. So, yep. looking forward to getting mm -hmm. her medical, my medical done, and and we'll follow up with that process with your with your viewers later. We'll be home like. before you know it. We're yeah. here. We're here. All right. For more information on this topic, please see the guidance for certain types of humanitarian or significant public benefit parole requests as outlined on the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services website. I will drop a link in the description box below. Philly cheese steak didn't last long. Hey, what you eating over there? Uh, fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. What else you got? Apple pie. Oh my gosh. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. All right. Four. Answer this question. Don't get it wrong. What festival goes best with mashed potatoes? Bingo! <laughs>